All right, so we're going to go ahead and go through these um, and see how you can kind of do is reason through these together. All right, number 14, we've got a block of weight W pulled along a horizontal surface at a constant speed. Um, so I know it's not accelerating. Um, by uh, There's our speed V by a force F, which acts um, at an angle of theta with the horizontal as shown. The normal force exerted on the block by the surface has a magnitude of. All right, so I would want to first off look at all the forces acting on our blockity block. So I'm going to go ahead and look at, um, it says it has a block, a weight of block W. Um, so this was our weight, or our force of gravity. OK, that's all that meant. Um, and then we've got a normal force, which we're trying to figure out how long to draw that. Fn. Um, we want to find the size of that force. So I'm going to look at um, normal force is a vertical force. And I know that because it's moving at a constant speed, and it doesn't say anything about it vertically accelerating, I know that in the y direction, um, there's no acceleration. There's not any acceleration in any direction, frankly. But I want to know about the normal force. So I look at that, and I say, OK, well, that just means that the net force in the y direction is equal to m times a. But we said the acceleration is 0. So there is no net force. Well, that's awesome, because that means that I have y direction equilibrium. And that's a balanced force situation. That means forces are balanced. Forces up and forces down must be balanced. So I look at all the forces acting up, and I notice that there's a normal force. But wait, there's more. I'm pulling over and up on the block. So I like to think of that force as a x and a y, an applied force. And I'm just going to look at that little fy. So we've got force normal plus force applied y is going to equal to all the forces going down, w. All right, well, they don't give me an fy. So I need to turn my letters into something that is going to make sense here. So what is fy? Um, it's the adjacent, or excuse me, the opposite side. Here's theta. So opposite side, I know that the force of the hypotenuse is f. This is just f sine theta. So when I replace f sine theta with fy, we are right on the way to getting our final answer to say that the normal force is equal to the weight minus f sine theta. So not too bad, we've kind of put everything in terms of like all the letters they gave us in the problem and went ahead from there. Questions you have so far? All right, let's do another example, um, kind of similar. Um, this is, <laughs> this is um, uh, a little editing thing on PowerPoint. So let's just read, it's all there. A block of mass m is accelerated across the rough surface by a force of magnitude f that is exerted at an angle theta with the horizontal as shown. Now, in this case, this is a rough surface. AP likes to use this little jig, jig, jigsaw line here to show that it's a rough surface. And that means there is a frictional force acting on the block. Friction always opposes motion. So it's going to be in the direction opposite that it's moving. So if it's um, asking about the acceleration, I'm going to assume that it's accelerating to the right. And in that case, I'm going to use Newton's second law, which deals with acceleration and that force, to try to figure out an answer. So what was the acceleration of the block? Um, once again, I'm going to take and look at all the forces acting. So I have the uh, force of gravity, um, which is m times g. Um, you know, notice. There's a bunch of M's and G's in here, so that's probably going to be helpful. Also, I have a normal force. And we've got a uh, force applied. We've got my little X component here, Fx and Fy. And then it also says there was some friction, um, which they called F. Um, 
They just call lowercase f. All right, now obviously I, I, I drew friction a little bit long here um, since it's accelerating to the right, but that's okay. Um, all right, so I want to find the acceleration of the block. So help minus hinder. Helping me accelerate to the right is x component, fx, which because it's an adjacent side, I can rewrite as f cosine theta is equal to m times a. Um, and oh, I forgot one thing. That's only that's only my helping force. But wait, I have a hindering force. So my net force is f cosine theta. That's helping me, but hindering me from accelerating is the force of friction. So help minus hinder, helping me accelerate to the right. If I want to solve for the acceleration, I can divide both sides by n. And lo and behold. Hey, there we go. Option C. All the vertical stuff didn't even matter here. I didn't even need it because it was all asking about the acceleration um, of the block, which is all in the horizontal direction. So I had all that stuff about the normal force, the force of gravity. In this case, I didn't even need it. All right, what questions um, do you have so far? All right, so today is, um, I'm just going to kind of give some disclaimers on some of the things here. So we did a little warm up. We're going to do a lesson of objects on inclines. Um, so the lab, I'm sure you're not going to object to this, but I'd rather you spend tonight finishing or studying for tomorrow's quiz, which includes the information I'm going to lecture on today. I understand that I'm giving you a quiz right after the day I lecture on it. So tomorrow there'll be some accommodations I make for as you're taking the quiz, um, things are going to be a little bit different. So you need to study worksheet two tonight. Um, keep working on the lab. I'm going to have you turn that in on Thursday. Um, I'm looking at the calendar, and I'm looking. Th this is the only way we're going to get to um, to get to where we need to by the end of the semester, and I want to make sure that happens. So tomorrow's quiz, expect a nice little accommodation, um, but you still need to be familiar with the questions I did yesterday. There's one question on, there's only two questions, by the way. Um, so there's one question on inclined forces. Um, uh, one question on inclined um, forces at, or forces at angles. So inclined forces is today's topic. And then um, forces at angles was yesterday's. So there's two questions. One about forces at angles, which I covered yesterday and was the first half of worksheet one. One question about inclined forces, which like I'm teaching today, second half of worksheet two. Um, so if that was if, if you only had one thing to do tonight for physics, I would look over the board notes from today and yesterday, and I'll post those today, and then uh, this worksheet here. The lab still needs to be turned in, um, and that's going to be on Thursday. I'll just push it back another day. And after you turn it in, I'm going to post a key to the lab so that you can basically work through the lab and just wrote all the answers um, to every question so that you can see and study my key um, because I'm not going to be able to give you back your lab that you turned in in time. So you can still look at it. You can still check the feedback. I'll, I'll give that in, available to you so that you can still see that, and that will help you. Um, so. Wednesday, work time, the quiz is going to be shorter. Start reviewing Thursday, uh, review day. Friday, unit two, mid-unit test. I also have, and you can grab this any way out, these are some practice force FRQs um, with the keys attached. Um, so I'm going to ask you to, to take these, um, but let's wait until tomorrow to decide what we're going to do with them. I want you to focus on this stuff first. Um, so this may be something I just give you and you have, or as we get closer, we'll see how tomorrow is. I'll, I'll let you know what I want you to do with the FRQs. Um, Thursday, we might look at those again. So this being said, let's learn about objects on inclines so that you can see exactly the type of problem um, and the problem solving strategy that you're going to need. So to warm up our lesson today, um, I have a situation that I'm going to propose to you. 
And to start out, let's consider a block that I'm pushing across the floor with some applied force. And so I'm pushing a block across the floor. It's a rough surface. Okay, so I could be accelerating or um, constant speed, doesn't really matter. And consider the four forces acting on it. There's the normal force perpendicular to the surface it's under. Applied force acting in the direction I'm pushing it. Force of friction, we'll say it's moving to the left. Um, force of friction is acting in the direct direction opposite the velocity. And here we go. Now all of a sudden I encounter a hill and I just keep pushing. So I'd like you to check your neighbors. Um, what all would change about the direction of the forces if the floor is now at an angle but I'm continuing to push it, um, you know, I'm just continuing to push it in the direction I'm, I'm trying to move along with it. So check your neighbor, which one of these would change, how would they change, in what way? Um, Let's see how you did. Huh? All right, let's 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 break down what, what's happening here. So, the center of the Earth has not moved. So the force of gravity is still, in our reference frame right now, still vertically downward. Um, even though I'm on a hill, it's still towards the center of the Earth. So that doesn't change. However, force applied is still in the direction that I was moving. The friction is in the opposite direction of the velocity, which in this case is up the ramp or parallel to the ramp surface. So this is going to be parallel to the surface. And the normal force is perpendicular to the surface is pressed up again. So the normal force changes too. They all changed except for the force of gravity. Now here's the thing. I'm gonna, we're going to have to do force diagram analysis on this problem. So. Option one is, is not going be um, not going to be a good idea. Option one is to say, okay, well, I want to analyze this force diagram, but my goodness, three of the four forces are not on my XY coordinate system. So that would mean if I just leave it and solve it like I might want to start doing, I'm going to have to break up force of friction into components, normal force into components. And apply force in the components, and then the force of gravity I can I can leave alone. That sounds really arduous. So I'm not going to ever ask you to do that, and nor do I recommend it. What I am going to recommend, however, is that rather than make the x direction be just you know arbitrary, put it on here. I'm going to change my coordinate system so that the x direction is parallel to the, the surface. What does this do? Well, hey, look at this. Now how many components or forces do I have to break into components? One. Only one. So we're going to make the x direction the direction of the incline, and the y direction is going to be perpendicular to it. That means only one force is going to be off my coordinate system. All right, so let's, let's kind of sum, summarize uh, how we're going to apply this. Um, all right, so... To make problem solving easier, to make problem solving easier for objects on an incline, reading through last year's AP comments after the test, and they said we should have spent more time on objects on an incline. Um, because it's a commonly tested topic. Um, so let's, let's figure out how we can make solving these problems a little bit easier. What we're going to do is we're going to rotate our x-axis 
Um, so it's parallel to the inclined surface. And our y-axis, so it's perpendicular to the inclined sur surface. It's perpendicular to inclined surface. All right, so what does this look like? I'm going to go ahead and draw a nice big sample problem here. Um, so let's say I have a ramp, and it's going to be at some angle theta, my incline. And let's say I have an object on the ramp. So I'm going to uh, turn it into a little force diagram here. So what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to make my x-axis be parallel and my y-axis be perpendicular to the ramp inclined surface. Super easy. So what will happen is my normal force will be on my axis. Um, if I have some applied force, if there is one, there might not always be an applied force. For example, if a block was sliding up a ramp and there was friction, if it's just sliding, there's no one currently pushing or pulling it, you might not have an applied force. Um, if it's frictionful, it's going to be over here, force of friction. Um, that's going to be on my x-axis, so I don't have to break that into components. And then the only one I'm going to have to break into components would be my force of gravity. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and we're going to kind of zoom in on this just a little bit. Um, force of gravity here. So I'm going to break this into components. And what I like to do whenever I solve these problems is I like to tilt my paper. So I'm used to X being horizontal. I would literally take my paper and I would tilt it so that when I'm looking at this problem here, I see the X as being horizontal. Mm -hmm. Then the only thing to upper the only things on up or down or left or right are going to be my force of gravity. And so with my paper tilted, I would make that into components. I would make that into a y component and an x component. I'm going to call this fgy and fgx. So those are all the little components of my gravitational force. Um, a couple things to note here. It's going to make a right triangle, or it's going to make uh, a perpendicular those are going to be perpendicular to my y-axis. Um, that's something I would point out. Um, and then I also would point out that this little angle here is actually going to be, I'll put a little star next to these two angles. Okay, so I'm going to put a little star next to those angles. These two angles are actually always equal. So if I know the, the tilt of the incline, then you're going to know the angle the gravitational force is directed away from the y-axis. Let me prove it to you. So if I take my little rulers, hopefully this will help you get a visual and, mem and remember this for the future. So in my old world scenario, gravity was pulling straight down, and x and y were right here. Fine. I don't like that scenario. So if I tilt my coordinate system, by, let's say, 20 degrees, gravity still pulls straight vertically downward. Um, but what angle is it going to be away from my new y-axis, however much I tilted it? So if I tilt this 20 degrees, or theta, to make it match the incline, it turns out that this angle here will always be the exact same amount of tilt, or 20 degrees. So this angle and this angle are always going to be equal to each other. Um, so that's going to be helpful information, um, that those two are always going to be equal. All right, let's do a couple problems using this scenario, um, these, this idea of objects on inclines, and see how you guys do with it. Ignore this weird little glitch line here. Um, OK, example number 18. This is going to be an object on an incline and we're going to try to analyze this motion. So I've got a 1,200 kilogram Scion XB, my dream car and current car. 
and it's on a 20 degree frictionless incline. And we're just going to let it go. We're just going to let it roll down and see what happens. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and draw a little picture. And here's my little blue box here. All right, so here's my little 1,200 kilogram car. Um, and I'm going to say, hey, car, what's currently physically pushing or pulling you? So let's draw some forces on you. So I'm going to draw a force diagram. All right, this is what you're going to see tomorrow in your quiz for an incline problem. You're going to see a big old dot. And you're going to see a dotted line that I, that I put on the quiz to help you just set up the problem. So that little dotted line obviously is going to correspond to the surface of the incline. That's there to help you. And so I'm going to use that as, as that's, that's my x-axis. I'm going to make that my x-axis, and we're going to rock this out. So I want to know the normal force and the acceleration uh, of the car as it goes down the ramp. So first off, let's look at the forces involved. Um, vertically straight downward is going to be my gravitational force. Um, and then I've got my normal force, which is going to be perpendicular to the surface. Beautiful. And it says it's frictionless, so I don't have to worry about anything going back up the ramp. And it also doesn't say anything about the car's wheels trying to push on the road and the road push on the car um, to have any kind of forward force. There's nothing mentioned about trying to apply force in the forward direction. So this is it. It's just going to be force of gravity and the normal force. Um, so when I look at these forces involved, I want to find the normal force. Um, I'm already thinking in terms of my new coordinate system. And I need to know something about this other half of the side to, to find my unknown normal force. So what I'd probably do is I'd probably break this problem into y direction and x direction. Because in the x direction, it was accelerating. And in the y direction is actually where I know um, that's where my normal force is going to be coming from. Um, so I want to find the normal force in the y direction. All right, so how can we do that? Well, I look and say, hey, car, are you accelerating uh, in the y direction? It's going to say, no. So let's look at my force of gravity. And I'm going to break it into components. So it's all x or all y. I'm going to call this FGY and FGX. So now the forces that are not on my coordinate system are broken into components, FGY and FGX. Um, and I also know that because my angle is 20 degrees, that this little guy here is also 20 degrees. Okay, so that's going to also be 20 degrees right in there. All right, so what am I going to do? Well, in the y direction, I know that the car is not accelerating vertically, or in the y direction, okay, perpendicular to the ramp. It's not flying out off the, the hill or you know crushing into that. So because of this, I can use Newton's second law. Um, net force in the y direction is equal to m times a sub y, which I said was zero. So hey, there's no there's no y direction net force. So I've got y direction equilibrium again. Hooray. All right, so y direction equilibrium, I know that my normal force must be equal to my vertical force acting in the y direction down, in, down, um, in quotes. And that's going to be FGY. All right, well, looking at FGY, um, let, me, let me make this a little bit different now. So I know that the force of gravity is equal to m times g. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite FGY, kind of like we did in the warm-up today, as being the hypotenuse, or FG, or mg, times the cosine of my 20 degrees. So I'm going to rewrite this as being m g cosine of 20 degrees because that little that little side is the adjacent side of that 20 degree triangle bam the hypotenuse was mg and we can go from there um, so i can calculate this now 
I actually know the mass is 1,200 kilograms. I know G on Earth, and I can solve for the cosine of 20. And we're going to get that the normal force must be 11,051 newtons. Okay, so that's my little y direction stuff. So that's all using the idea of vertical forces are balanced, and I've only got one up and one down force setting them equal to each other and going on our way. Um, X direction stuff. In the X direction is the only, I'm going to use Newton's second law to figure out my acceleration. Alright, so the net force in the x direction is going to be equal to m times a sub x. And helping me accelerate in the x direction is fgx. No hinderers here. Um, Alright, so fgx is going to be the x component of my gravitational force. So I'm going to take my hypotenuse times sine of 20 degrees. So I've got m g sine of 20 degrees is equal to m times a sub x. We can simplify this. I don't even need to know the mass. In most cases, I won't even be given it. So the fact that it cancels here is very cool. Um, that shows me that the acceleration in the x direction is equal to g sine of whatever my angle is. So this is actually something that's going to be true for all frictionless ramp situations. Frictionless ramps. So the acceleration, after I use Newton's second law, M's cancel, mass is cancel, I didn't even need to know it. It's going to be independent of the mass. It's going to be g times sine of theta, um, which is going to be 9.8 times sine of 20 degrees. And that's going to be equal to uh, 3.4 meters per second squared. Quite easily done. All right, any questions on this one? I know this is a lot to process, um, but we've got one more. So I'm going to give you a, a couple seconds to, to propose any questions that you're having. Remember, it was accelerating down the ramp. That's how I used uh, to figure out my help minus hinder, helping me accelerate to the right. Um, Matthew, would you mind just closing that down for me, please? All right, let's look at number 19. Okay, number 19. Um, last example of the day, give your neighbor a high five. We're doing okay, hopefully. Um, all right, so this is a, an example problem, and this should actually look kind of familiar because this is an Atwood's machine with a twist. It says there's two objects connected by a pulley. Hey, we did that. But they decided to make it even extra fancy by putting the ramp on an incline and making this really cool Atwas machine. So here it is. Um, here's my little, uh, I'm going to draw this a little bit bigger here over in a second. Um, so I've got my, um, my incline here. This is going to be 50 degrees. And then, um, so that's my incline. And then I've got my two blocks. Um, my one block is hang is over here, and my other block is hanging off this pulley. Okay, so I'm going to draw some force diagrams on here. And they give me the 8 kilogram block is over here, the 3 kilogram block. Um, find the acceleration of the 3 kilogram mass. Okay, first thing I want to notice is that these blocks are connected. So if it says the acceleration of 3 kilogram mass, what they really want me to find is the acceleration of the system. 
because these are connected objects. Okay, I'm just going to put connected. All right, so they're connected. I'm already thinking, like, maybe Newton's so law will help me out here. Internal forces, connected objects. But let's see. Um, so I want to find the acceleration of the entire system. Now, I actually don't know which way it's going to accelerate. Like, I don't know if the force down the ramp is going to be bigger than the force um, that this one's going to pull this way. Either way, I'm going to have acceleration directed in one of these directions. I'm going to just make the assumption right now that I think that the force down the ramp by the 8 kilogram is going to be bigger than the force um, pulling this big block down here because the 8 kilogram is so much more massive. But I could, I could come back later and, and figure out for sure. Um, so I'm going to say, and I'm going to assume that I think it's going to accelerate in that direction. If I need to come back later, I can. Um, so I'm accelerating in that direction, so I need to figure out all the forces I need to find the net force in that direction. The pulley, remember, just redirects the force. So I can think of these two blocks just kind of being strung out in a straight line. Totally works. Um, I can just pretend these are all in a straight line. So I'm going to look at each one. I'm going to do the, the hanging one first because it's the easiest. So I've got a force of tension acting along the rope. And I've got a force of gravity um, on the, we'll call this Fg on 3. So there's a force of gravity on block three. Um, and then I've got the object over here. Now this is on an incline. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my normal force perpendicular to the surface. My force of gravity on the eight, vertically down. And then there's definitely a force, because there's this string attached, there's this force of tension pulling on that eight kilogram block as well. That little force of tension on there. Um, this thing on an incline looks kind of funky, so I'm going to make my x-axis go along the surface. Um, and that's going to allow me to break my force of gravity once again into components. So I'll call this Fgx and Fgy. And now I have... Um, I'm going to need a little perpendicular here. Now I have the force diagram for the problem set up. So I'm assuming both ramps are accelerating in that direction um, along my little x. You know, here's my x-axis again extending down. All right, any questions on the force diagram setup? Because that's actually the most complicated piece. All right, let's do, um, I'm only concerned, I want to find the net force of the whole system, so I can find the mass, or the acceleration of the entire system. So there we go, Newton's second law, net force on this whole system, all these objects together. Now I want to treat them as connected objects, so I'm going to treat them all as one nice little system, one happy accelerating family. So helping me accelerate to the right, or well, down the ramp in the x direction here, is going to be, hey, FGX, you're helping me accelerate in that direction. So I'll put FG on 8. Okay, so I'll just put FG8X, just the x component of that force. Helping me accelerate. Hindering me from accelerating to the, in that direction is the force of tension. On the other block, the force of tension is actually helping me to accelerate along that direction. And then hindering me from accelerating along that direction is Fg3. Um, so I'm just going to put um, I'm just going to replace Fg3 with M3g. Okay, so I can just replace that now with M through G. All right, that's all equal to mass of oops, system, so 3 plus 8 um, times acceleration that I'm looking for. So this is supposed to say mass substitute of 3 plus 8 or system, whatever you want, um, times acceleration. All right, what, what happens to these two forces? Force of tension. Remember, these are Newton's law. These cancel because of uh, 
Newton's third law force pairs for connected objects because they are Newton's third law force pairs um, for internal forces cancel. So I've got enough information now. You can solve for A, which I'm not going to do now, but you can do it later if you want. You can solve for the acceleration um, by using this expression, solve for A, plug in my mass of each of these, use my trig, 50 degrees, um, and then we can solve from there. Okay. So, I only, I only have three minutes for you. Um, so tomorrow, we'll have some, some work time. There will be an accommodation provided uh, on that little quiz over inclined forces. So tonight, I've recorded this lecture, hopefully. Um, if you want to go back and watch it or you know, scan through some of the, the lecture again, um, I'll post these board notes.